want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you. I am lifted on. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. evening to see him. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. I'm going to uh, just minister from a, a little subject um, from Mark chapter 11 tonight. We'll go ahead and turn there and as everybody's taking their seat and uh, take a little, y'all got a little spoiler Sunday evening, <laughs> but I'm going to be preaching on uh, getting into position for perfect faith from the, from the, from the message that Brother Ram preached, uh, perfect faith. Um, Sometimes when I'm when I'm you know when I'm reading what Brother Ram said, I, little little things that he says in a message will pop out, and so just kind of want to call out getting into position for perfect faith. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we go to the Word. Lord God, we're so grateful to be able to gather together and look into Your Word, Lord. And we know that the Scripture says that when a man finds a pearl of great price, he just sells everything so he can get it. And Lord, we know, Lord, that your word is like, it's like a great big field that we go treasure hunting in, Lord. And tonight, Lord, I, I want to go through your word and find these little treasures, Lord Jesus, that will give your people edification and strength, Lord Jesus, that'll help somebody along life's road. And maybe there's somebody this evening, Lord, that's battling something and going through something in life. And I pray, God, that tonight you'll give them something from your great treasure box. Pull something out, Lord God, that, Lord, that they might be able to be equipped with. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the reading of this word, Lord, tonight, and you ask your blessing upon this service, Lord, that you'll come and be welcome here among us, Lord Jesus. Lord God, you've given us the power of your word, nor, 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 Lord, give us the strength of, of your spirit, Lord, to come and quicken it, Lord, and make it alive to us that will come and live in our hearts, Lord. We ask and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> so getting into position for perfect faith. Now, uh, this is, this is uh, one of those, you know, kind of perplexing scriptures. I, I, even Brother Brandon, when he would read, he, he talked about, he, he would read this, talking about coming to a place where you could speak and all these kind of things. He would, he would say it. For a while, it stumbled him and everything. But let's read it and, and see what it says. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 27. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now think about that, that if you, if you, if you come to a place where there's no doubt, that all the doubts are moved, and you, you come into a position for perfect faith, right. you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the right. sea, right, and it will happen. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, right. and ye shall have them. Right. Now there's another, you see Jesus is telling his disciples, he's setting them up for a position to have faith to believe. Right. And he's telling them, now listen, when you pray, 
Don't come groveling and everything, but come confidently and boldly, believing that the things that you're asking for, that you already receive them. And I, I love this. This is one of my favorite verses. When, because you, you know, a lot of times when you pray, you'll get in your mind that you're supposed to, you know, hold your hands a certain way, or, or kind of uh, lay on the floor, or get on your knees, or whatever. Now, but this, this Jesus says, when, when ye stand praying, and you know what the scripture also says, when you've done all you can do, stand. And it's talking about he's talking about here somebody that's coming confidently. Not groveling and all those kind of things, but somebody standing on what they believe. When you stand praying, forgive. Oh, my. If you have all against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. You may be seated. The Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. Now, there's a lot packed into that scripture. Let's see if we'll unpack what we can unpack and, and find in the, in the treasure hunt tonight. And uh, I don't have too many quotes, so we'll, we, maybe we won't hold you too long tonight. But kind of start off on this. You know, Brother Brandon, when he was preaching this sermon, he, he, right, after, right as you're reading this scripture, he's, he's talking about Jesus is setting everybody in position for faith. And, and lays down to stand praying and have confidence in all these things that we just read. And then he kind of throws that right there in the middle. Right. You got to forgive. Right. Forgive. Now, now you think about that when you come, when you're, when you're down there in your prayer closet or, or riding in your car or whatever. And you begin to tell God that you believe his word and make your confession boldly and all those things. And then there's a little hiccup. There's something that you got against somebody. And you see God to, have a, to come to a position of faith, of perfect faith, where all doubt is gone. There's nothing in the way. You got to get rid of all of the things that you've got against other people. And see, uh, yeah, I remember last time I was preaching, I kind of got on uh, offenses and things like that. But see what think what builds up in people was when you get, get around one another, offenses begin to build up, and you begin to build up complexes against one another. You begin to think that somebody's got something against you, and it becomes a blocker, and you'll never be able to move past that. You'll never be able to move beyond that if you can't forgive one another. So forgiveness from God is actually predicated on you forgiving one another. If you can't forgive your brother who you've seen, how's God, how do you expect God to forgive you? How do you expect God to forgive you of the great big mountain of things when you can't forgive somebody of just a, a, a little small I, I was kind of contemplating the other day about how we get so tore up with little small things when there was Stephen with getting rocks hurled up against his head, getting his skull cracked and, and, and all those things and we, we account many times the little small things as something big. We got to lay those 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 things aside if we want to have get come to a position of perfect faith brother brother bob that was an unpleasant way to start this sermon i wish you would get off of those kind of medley kind of things but you see that these things are necessary to bring us to a place where we can have confidence before god because god wants you to come to a place where you can have confidence where you can approach him boldly with confidence now now think if you could think if you could just if you're not at that place yet if you could imagine what it would be like to be able to get on your knees and approach god confidently knowing that there's nothing that you have against to anybody else, that your slate is clean, that you don't have anything against anybody else, that you've maybe even the ones that you think have something against you, you've gone to them and you've straightened it all out and everything's laid bare and then you see, then you can have confidence to come before, before God boldly, professing and confessing that what you believe is word, that you that you know he is the God, that he's your God, the, the God that you serve and you can come boldly professing, you can stand like Jesus said, stand upon his word stand confidently on what you know to be right you see sometimes we got we just got forgive means to just let go and sometimes we got to just let stuff go even you know many times we quote the lord's prayer luke uh, chapter 11 and and i, I think one of the other gospels is, is really where it's laid out more plainly but in luke chapter 11 it says give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone everyone that is indebted to us. My, that's a, 
That's, that seems like it's asking a lot. But if you can forgive everyone that is indebted to you, it will free things up so that you can come with confidence. It'll free you. It lifts, it lifts that burden off of you. And God wants you to be free of all the burden. You know, that's one of the promises that we get, we have access to in the message is freedom. That when you receive the word and you're able to just let stuff go and come to God boldly, it gives you freedom. Freedom is one of the benefits of the message of serving God for freedom and liberty to serve him, freedom to be able to just to grab a hold of his promises and say, I believe it and there's nothing that's holding me back. Freedom to let other things, let things go, all these weights that so easily beset, beset us. Now, now let's get into the topic here. What is faith? Now, Brother Branham said you cannot be saved without faith and, and, and he talked about how faith actually declares or it speaks for itself. Now think about that, that faith, when you've got faith, faith is the thing that does the speaking on its own behalf. Faith is this thing that, that declares whether it's actually there or not. And that, now, now let's, let's kind of get down to the, we'll say the nitty gritty, get down to the, where the rubber meets the road. Because the devil, the devil will sit, maybe the devil's sitting here right here in this sermon. He, pro, he probably is sitting here right there, right here in the pews next to you listening and the devil believes and trembles the Bible says the devil will listen and he acknowledges that that God is God that there's no other God beside him he acknowledges that all these things are are you know technically true and so of course the the devil believes but what's the difference between the devil's believing and your believing now the devil can look at the scripture and say well that's true that's yeah, sure, sure. But now, when you grab a hold of the Word of God by faith and believe it in your heart, and you say that's true, something t something takes place. What takes place? It actually becomes alive. It actually lives. So there, you can see that the difference is faith makes the Word live. Faith actually produces a living word, a living reality. It will make the things that you read about and it'll turn it from just like an education, an intellectual faith. It'll turn it into a living word, a living reality. <coughs> and that's why it declares or it speaks for itself because when it becomes alive, then it becomes, it is testifying of itself. It testifies, it's bold. Brother Brown said, and faith is something that you believe is there that really nothing else will declare it's there but faith. Nothing else will declare it's there but faith. And then he goes on to talk about how faith won't work without love. And that's where, you know, Brother, Bra Brother Wade has been preaching on perfect love and, and, and we've been talking about adoption and those kind of things. And you see how love and faith are so closely related that you've got to actually have love to have real faith. And Brother Brown says, Brother Brown says, explain, he, he began to explain in this message, he was talking about how the, this couple, when they first got married, he, uh, they were just a young couple, and the, and the, and the man in the story, had, uh, he had a history of alcohol problem. And when they got married, the, the little sister, she said, now listen, I know that you've had a, a background of alcoholism, but now listen, I love you. And if you, if you ever stray, if you ever go have a trouble with that and go back out into alcoholism and, 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 go and, and, and kind of mess up, you know, when I'm not around, you go to work and start hanging out with people or whatever. If you ever fall, just remember that I love you. Right. I, I love you. And when you come back, we'll get together and we'll pray about it. We'll bring this situation before God and we'll get together and we'll iron this thing out. Now, now think about this. That's a lot contrary to the way a lot of people do in the message. A way a lot of people approach their marriages and things is not with love and not with confidence, but with bashing one another over the head until, until you drive one another into submission. Most of, the, most of the time we approach situations like that, or people you see that, if you, if you mess up, when you get home, I'm going to drag you in front of the church and you're going to confess, I'm going to drag you over this way and that way, I'm going I'm to I'm knock you out or whatever. But you see, love, love is actually, you've got to have love to have confidence. And see, that brother, when he went to work he told all of his all the people that he was working with he said how could I do anything to to, uh, to go against the confidence that she has in me I know she loves me with a love like that how could I do anything that's the kind of love that produces faith 
And you see, when you've got that kind of love to God, then you can come boldly before him with confidence. That's the kind of love that will produce a perfect faith. When you come before him and you can say, I know that you saved me and I know you brought me out of sin and I know that you would not have died on the cross if you didn't love me and I know that the reason that you set the fivefold ministry is because you love me and I I know all of these things and, and the love has been built up until you've got an actual love relationship going on and you have confidence because you know that you love God and you know that he loves you and it's a relationship. You see, that's what God wants you to have a relationship with him. He doesn't want you to have a relationship built on fear and wondering if he's going to just have something horrible to you if you slip up or if you mess up. He wants you to love him. That's the kind of relationship he wants you to have. You see, Brother Brown said, Brother Brown said, faith believes that God will work it out. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he'll do it anyway. See, it masters all circumstances. And faith and love is relation because you can't have faith unless you got love because your faith is in a God who is the very essence of love. Faith and love works together. And so then you can see that if you love God, then everything will begin to work out. Every, you begin to come to church. You begin to do the things that you, a Christian does because it's not because that you've been, you, 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 it's because that you love God. Amen. Brother Abraham said, and if you love the Lord, just not trying to dodge hell, not just trying to dodge hell, but you love the Lord, then you have faith in God. Amen. See if you love him. If you love him, really from that agapo love that Brother Wade's been bringing out, agapo love, that kind of love, the selfless love that's willing to lay everything out. Uh, You know, in the beginning of this message, Brother Ram talks about how faith really, really true faith does for other people. You're not so interested in them doing for you, but it's something for other people. And that's what real agapo love is doing. Agapo love will make a minister labor for hours to try to get a message, not even concerned about, about how much money or how much fame or what any of that kind of stuff all of that becomes irrelevant Uh, love will make people labor for one another love will make people do for one another love will make you go to the hospital and be with people love will make you get off work or whatever to help people love will make you talk to your wife or your spouse differently it'll make you lay down your selfish attitude and stuff and treat somebody differently because that's that's what agapo love is not filial love not storge love and not definitely not eros love but a love of God that proceeds from God himself, that kind of substance faith that we're talking about. Now, Brother Ram said, now, now, now think about this now. We think about it in the context of the sermons that have been preached, talking about adoption, talking about it coming to a place, talking about uh, perfect love. Brother Ram said, now, now he preached this sermon in front of a prayer line, and at the end of this sermon, he said, Y'all, this didn't anchor in. I don't think it's anchoring in what I'm really trying to express. So I want to kind of expose that tonight. I want what he was trying to say to anchor in. I want you to catch the vision of what he was trying to say that they did not catch back then. And Brother Ram said, now we want to speak now upon faith and a different type of faith. A different type of faith. Perfect faith. And he said, that's a great thing. Now, maybe, maybe later on you can go back and listen to this message. It's only just a little bit over an hour, so it won't take that long. Go back and listen and meditate on these things that he says it, as he says it like this. Now, we want to speak now upon faith and a different type of faith, a different type of faith. And he says, we're, I'm trying to get the church into the place to where we could really see apostolic times moving among us. Now, what's it going to take to see apostolic times moving among among the church? It's going to take a Malachi 4 to actually literally turn the hearts of the children back to the original faith of the fathers, actually restore them back to open up, to, to preach the revelation of the seven seals and those mystery truths would literally turn your heart back and cause you to come to a position of perfect faith, realizing what you're doing and whom you have believed and positionally place you so that you can believe the right way. Amen. Now, Brother Branham said, listen how he says it. He says, and it's just laying right at the door. Oh, we see it, but we want to see more of it. 
We see it, but we want to see more of it. We want it as such a flow that it'll be a help to us to flow out to others. Amen. Amen. To flow out to others, what about to flow, flow back to me? To flow out to others because real faith goes out to others. You see, real faith is where you can help others and do something for others and do something for the kingdom of God and do something for God. You see, see what stumbles people is that when you say perfect faith, you begin in your mind, you begin to think, well, I can never, I can never approach to perfection. I can never approach to this kind of faith. The same thing with the capstone, the same thing with the token, all these things, these great doctrines. It seems like so, so far off. I, I want to get it down to your level a little bit that it is possible. And that is actually the reason why the message was given so that you could have perfect faith. The reason why the message was given so that so the little child could have perfect faith. I, I was thinking this morning uh, about uh, about Peter, that, that a man sitting there with, with no education that could not read read or write. Um, maybe he could a little bit. I, he, couldn't, he couldn't read. Uh, and yet he preached. He taught about the stature of a perfect man. Now see, see, it's open to anybody that can receive. If you'll just open up the door of your heart and let the word come in, the word will actually position you, position you and place you in a way that you can begin to take a hold of God's word and recognize what you're doing here, recognize what, has got, what God has done in your life, and you can actually believe in the way that God wants you to. Believe in the way that the word actually begins to come out of your own mouth, and you begin to speak the things that or in the scripture so that when you pray, you're not praying like a little baby anymore, but you're praying, standing in faith, believing in the God that you serve, that he's, he loves you and he's there for you and he's watching over you. He's watched over you your whole life and he's there to make his word come to pass in you. Now, now, now let's just go through perfection just briefly. Let's read some scriptures. Now in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 to 2, it says, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, to perfection. Perfection now, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God or the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. All of those things are good and we know we've been taught that we go beyond, we've got to keep going on like where, where did Pentecost fail? By stopping. You don't go, you don't stop. You keep moving on because we're moving on towards something. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9, Paul said, For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong. And this also we wish, even your perfection. Not that you would be little babies tossed around by, around by every wind of doctrine, but that you would be perfected. In Luke chapter 8, now here's a very strange one. Maybe we hadn't come across before. Here's a real strange one. And this is the parable of the, seed, the sower of the seed. I'm going to read it for you and, and just call out some things. Because Jesus said, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. We know the parable about how the, 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 the sower goes forth and, and a lot of the seed gets choked out and different kind of things. Things happen so it can't grow. And, and Jesus is explaining it. And he says, those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root for which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life. That kind of sounds like lay out of sea a little bit, doesn't it? Choked up with the cares and the riches of the pleasures of this life. Too much time to watch Netflix and too much time to get on Instagram than to actually get into the message and bring no fruit to perfection to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. I bring forth fruit. So when you see the fruit being born and it matches the same thing that it went into the ground, then you've got perfection back again. I'm just kind of laying this out. Brother Bram said in perfect faith in this message, he says, now you see somebody else do something by word act of God or promise of God, and many of them say, I can do that too. Now, I'm tying this in with, with a scripture that I just read about the fruit not coming to perfection. Now, listen to what he says. 
I can do that too. It's an imagination. And when they do, you find them wrecked up out there somewhere. It's got to be a substance. Now, that is potentially a faith. That is something that would bring you to a faith. It's potentially like if you'd asked me for an oak tree and I give you an acorn, potentially you have an oak tree, but it hasn't produced itself yet. But when it really brings itself out, it is an oak tree. And when you imagine that God does this, but when it's revealed to you, it's a faith then, a perfect faith that cannot fail. And I believe that Brother Branham preaches in different levels. Now, on one hand, he's saying, yeah, you, you start off at justification, but wait till it comes out of the ground. Wait till it comes on out. Then you got perfect faith in, there in your soul. But what about, what about after you've been born again? Then let, that, let that, what has been planted continue to mature as the word has matured down through Martin Luther and John Wesley and Pentecost. And now it's coming out, coming out to the headstone, coming out to a place where now you can see the original fruit that was planted, the original grain of wheat coming forth. So what is perfection? What perfection are we talking about? We're talking about a perfect faith, a mature faith, a fruitful faith, a faith where there's no leaven anymore, no leaven, nothing mixed in it, no hybridization, no doubt, no, it's back to the original again, because Brother Branham said that you got to have perfect faith for a rapture. In this message, he said, perfect faith came for, for a perfect rapture. Perfect faith. Now think about that. Perfect faith. A perfect faith is given to a perfect bride to take a perfect rapture. See how perfect that is? You've heard a perfect message, and that perfect message was given so that you could have a perfect faith. You see, it's something that you have, something that you've already got when you became a born-again believer, growing into manifestation, growing into reality. And that's why sometimes it's so confusing to listen to the way that he's wording it because it seems like you've got it and then it's far off. It seems like when you listen to the statue of a perfect man, you've got it. You've got, you're born again, but yet you've come all this way and you don't have the Holy Ghost yet. You've got it, but there's something else. You've got it, but it's growing into maturity. And when it grows into maturity, then you come to a place where it's mature and there's no doubt, and you come to speaking conditions. The gospel message, the message is actually getting us in position for perfect faith. And, you know, I think this is, I, I, I know many times many preachers have preached on how we, we keep pushing it off and pushing it off, but now I believe it's time to get into the message and realize that it's a present tense reality that the things that Brother Branham talked about now are accessible to you and I. The things that so many people have probed at now are, like he said, it's right at the door. It's right at the door. Or if you can just, just take some time and get in there and hunt for the treasure, hunt for the little bits of gold and the nuggets. And, and when you come out, you'll say, this is something that I found that will give me faith. This is the thing that I needed to overcome what I'm going through. This is the thing that I needed to take me to the next level. That's what the message is doing to you. Now, Brother Brown said in the message adoption back in 1960, he said, now listen how he says, talks about positionally, positionally placing you. Bible teaching is usually a little treacherous, a little, you know, kind of walking out on the thin ice, we call it. But we just feel that maybe at this point and at this time, it might be good to kind of bring the church to what I think a complete understanding positionally of what we are in Christ Jesus. Now, as we, as we go along in this message, you'll begin to understand why it's so important for you to begin to realize who you are because who you are and who God is and the relationship, the love relationship that you have because that is actually what positionally brings you to a place of perfect faith is knowing who you are. What I think a complete understanding positionally of what we are in Christ Jesus. And sometimes I think that preaching is a wonderful thing, but I believe sometimes, Brother Beeler, that teaching goes beyond that, especially to the church. Preaching usually catches the sinner, brings them under condemnation by the word, but teaching places a man positionally what he is. And see, that's how you're going to have perfect faith is by understanding through the teaching, through the preaching of the word, what you are. And we can, now listen, I got this bolded and, and real big in my notes here. We can never rightly be able to have faith until positionally we know what we are. So if you want to have perfect faith, 
this kind of mature faith that I'm talking about, you've got to know who you are and you've got to understand who you are. You've got to believe who you are. Of course, that only comes by getting in the word. Now, Brother Branham, he began to talk about how faith, faith versus science. Faith, faith does not care about what you see. It does not care about circumstances. Faith, faith just looks to the unseen. Faith sees what the senses cannot. Brother Branham says, now faith, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And it's impossible to please God without faith. You cannot please him. And if you say you believe God, you have never seen him. See, so then you've got to believe it by faith. And if you could see him, it would be no more faith. Anything that the senses declares is no more faith. It's a scientific fact. Now you say, you might begin to think, well, I I wish that I could see him. I wish that I could see him right here. But your faith is so much higher than your, your natural senses that when you see him by faith, it's greater than if you could see him sitting there in the chair sitting there in a pew because if you see him with the inward eye then you it's actually him inside of you that allows you to see and it's greater than that because on the inside you're not looking at things that you see anymore you're looking like Peter when Jesus called him to walk on the water and he stepped out on something that he could not see and he ignored all the things that he could see like Abraham who ignored the circumstances to ignore how old he was and instead of looking at how old he was in the circumstances, looked straight into the face of, the, of God's promises and claimed it. Anything that the senses declares is no more faith. It's a scientific fact. It's got no more faith. So faith, faith is only concerned with looking at God's word. Brother Abraham said, you have to accept him by faith. And he that cometh to God must believe God. And faith comes by hearing the word of God. See, you must first believe this is God's word. And you must come to God by the word. See, just take the word, what it says, and that's right. Now, see, we're we're coming to a place. He's establishing what it takes to have perfect faith. When you can look at God's word and accept it and say, I believe that that's true. I know that it's true. I know that I believe that. Then it begins to build your faith. Actually, when you begin to sit in a, ser- in a service like this, and a service actually as the preaching of the gospel goes over the pulpit, your faith begins to rise. If you really open the door of your heart and you listen, and through the service, your faith is building and building and building, just like it was in this service. As Brother Brandon preached, he said, I'm trying to build your faith. And at the end of the service, they had a prayer line. Why at the end of the service and not the beginning? Because as they had heard the word, their faith was built and built to a place until they began to believe God. And Brother Brown said, you must come with an unfailing faith, believing that God made the promise. But now you have to be in a position to have that faith. You got to be in a position to have that faith. That's what the word does is it places you. It puts you right there in that position where you can grab a hold to it. And that's why Brother Brown said, and that's what we're going to talk on. See, to receive that faith. And then he goes on, he talks about how in Hebrews 11, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's not what you imagine, not something that you can just, you, you're just hoping for or something. It's just as real to you as any sense of your body will declare anything else. It's just as real as to say, I feel my coat. It's just as real as I hear that baby talking. And I'm talking about faith now. I'm talking about when you get a real revelation and you know that God has opened your eyes on the inside, opened up your your faith eye, then you, it's as real to you as this pulpit. It's as real as the carpet. It's as real as the pew you're standing on. And Brother Branham said, if you've got real faith and you go to the doctor and he says, you've got cancer, you'll laugh at the doctor because you've got something that's greater than anything that the doctor could say. It's just as real as I hear that baby talking there or making this noise. See, just that real is music playing. It's real because it's based upon something real, not based upon the sinking sands of man's theology or man's imagination or something, maybe some kind of supernatural thing that maybe God allowed you to see at one time, but it's based upon the rock of the revelation of God's word, the revelation of who he is. It's not upon what you can or can't, can or cannot see or feel. 
like, like somebody, we were, we were talking to some young people one time, and somebody said, well, I, I, you know, I don't believe that a minister has a right to get up and preach behind the pulpit unless he sees something supernatural first. Now, see, then you got to go back and compare it with the Word. What's greater, to be able to see the pillar of fire or something, or to see an angel walk down the aisle, or to actually have a revelation of God's Word, a revelation that gives you that kind of substance faith that you know what you're standing on. And see, then your house is not like that parable that Jesus taught. Then your house is not built upon a sinking sand. Now, I, I hate to say it, but that's what many people today have done is they've allowed their, their spiritual condition to be built upon a sinking sand of creeds or ideas or just their, their laziness that they never went on with the gospel and they never went on, they never were encouraged enough within themselves to go and find out what the message was about. And then they find out that they built everything on a sinking sand that crumbles at the end of the road. But Brother Brown said that if you built, if your revelation, if your spiritual experience is built upon the rock of revelation it will never fail it can never be taken away from you and it's built what's perfect faith based on if faith is based upon god's word now y'all hang on with me i know some some of y'all i know y'all are like this is this is real basic why is he covering all this come on now we're we're getting somewhere <laughs> y'all ain't intimidating me <laughs> your faith your faith is in god's word Brother Brown said it's a substance, not an imagination, not an emotion, but something that you have, and it comes to you by hearing the Word of God, the Word of God, and that only, that only now. Now, that means, that means that you're not saved because of a certain minister. You're not saved because of a certain man or even the certain church that you go to because those things could be taken away. All that could be taken away. But if, you're, if, you're, if you know and you recognize that you're saved, the reason that you're here tonight is because God has done something in your life. You'll never be able to remove that. Brother Bram said that puts it back to where your faith in is not in some individual. It's not in a man. It's not in an organization. Amen. It's not in a group of people. It's in God because God is the word. See, your faith Amen. is in God. Amen. So then, you know, when you, get, when you get to a desperate place and you begin to call out to God and you have a, a love relationship with God, that agapo love, the deep calling to the deep, then see, if, you're, if your faith is based in your faith with God, then you don't have to go call somebody else and wait for somebody else to do something. You don't have to, you're not relying on somebody else's relationship with God because you yourself have a personal relationship with God for yourself and you can stand and pray for yourself. I, I believe that's what every God called minister wants for the congregation of the Lord. It's for everybody to have their own relationship with God. And if it's, not, if it's not some individual, if it's not some man, then that includes you, you see, because you're not saved because something that you did. No. You're not saved because of your works. No. <sighs> Peter, Peter, one time, he thought, well, I'm, I'm real good. I, I, I'm never going to leave you, Lord. I'm never. I'm, in Matthew 26, it says, though all men should be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. And he thought he was going to be saved because of how much he could just, just work up the gumption or work up the courage or whatever. He thought he was going to be able to save himself. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee that this night before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice. Psalm 100 says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We're not the ones that has done it. He's the, and now, and y'all bear with me now. I, I'm getting to something. That, that if we have confidence that he is the one that has transformed us, that we didn't stop smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol or all of the things that we can look back and see that we used to do. We didn't come out of those strange doctrines because of our own power, but it's actually the Lord that has moved us. The Lord has brought us to this place. He's the one that has carried us this far. And you see, that, that actually positions you to where you can have perfect faith to look at your own life and recognize that God has done something in you, that God's done something for you, and it's not something that you can point at, at a man or an organization or something, that God has done it. In Zechariah chapter 4, it says, 
The word of the Lord is a rubble, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's not by your doings. It's not by your power or your working something up, but it's by his spirit that has brought you this far. His spirit is the thing that is working and doing it in you. And that's the way that the headstone's going to come, not by your struggling and striving, and although that's part of it, but it's his grace that's going to come to the church. It's grace, grace. It's he shall bring forth a headstone thereof with shoutings, crying grace, grace unto it. It's his grace to you that's brought it. So then you can say, we're going to say goodbye to all the complexes that have come by looking at man and looking at yourself. Right. Goodbye to all the things that where you say, well, I'm not smart enough and I'm not good enough and I'm not smart enough. He's the one that made the way. He's the one that's died on the cross so that you could come to him. You say, well, I'm not pretty enough, girls, and I'm, I'm not smart enough, guys, and I'm not strong enough. I'm not this enough. He's, it, the word says that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So when you begin to look back at his word instead of a man, instead of your own self, instead of an organization, then you can begin to have co- uh, perfect faith. It's, many times we look at our own lives and look back at the things we used to do and say, well, I, I, I've got all these transgressions. How can I ever pay for it? I'll never be able to pay for my transgressions, but his word says that it's already paid for. It's already paid for. Amen. And so perfect faith looks to him. It looks to the things that you cannot see. It looks to, the, it looks to what God has already accomplished in his word. Brother Brown said, I, I love this quote in 1954. He said, therefore, Jesus didn't make a mistake when he said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father in heaven is perfect. And how could a human being be perfect? How can you be perfect in your own self? I hope we just squash that. It's not in your own self. How could a human being be perfect? He could be perfect by his perfect faith, resting in him, saying he paid the price for me. And that's how you can be perfect, by perfect faith in him, perfect faith in that perfect one. And Brother Brown said, and he promised it in his word, and here he comes and promised it for this day. Therefore, you know where you're standing when he said so. See, there you're entering into a position. You're entering into a position for perfect faith when you can look at God's word and know that he said so. He said, see, that gives me a faith because he never does nothing contrary to his written word. And if it was contrary to the word, I couldn't have faith in it. Brings it right back again to the word. See, faith in hearing the word of God, you must hear the word of God. God's word is that all sufficient word. It's all you have need of is this word. And see, now, now you're coming when you heard the word and it's built up within you and it's built up. Now you're coming into position for perfect faith. And Brother Bram said, I want you to get this now. The church has got to lift itself in the power of God. The church has got to lift itself in the power of God. He said, how? We are too close to the end now. And I believe the church is in condition where we can teach it a little deeper things and rub some of this make-believe out and get into something real. Get into something real where you begin to realize that Jesus was right when he said that all things, all things are possible to them that believe. All things means all things. That means that your family can be saved. That means that that disease that you've been struggling with all these years, that it's not too late. The devil might be telling you that you've been suffering with that too long, but all things are possible to them that believe. All things. And, and it's true where Jesus said in Matthew 21, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. If you believe that all things are possible, then that's possible too. If you believe the word and the word is in you and you've been identified with the word, then you have a right to speak the word. You can and speak the word and you have that privilege. You have that privilege because the veil of the shuck has been pulled back from your eyes and now you're coming to a position of faith where you know what you have access to. When the shuck is over your eyes, you don't know what you have access to. But when it's pulled back, then you can see clearly. You can see what you've got access to because now the grain is made bare. You can see your eyes. That's why Brother Brown told that story 
story about his mama would rub that coon grease all over him. The coon grease is the message of the hour that has been applied to our eyes to take away that shuck veil and reveal to us the promises of God that we have access to. The promises are like all things are possible to them that believe. And we are believers, are we not? We believe in the good times. We believe in the bad times. We believe when things aren't going right. We believe because we are believers. We believe in God. We believe. We know what we believe in. Now, Brother Brown said in spiritual food in due season, he said, I want you, I want you to get built up now. I want you to get built up in the holy oracles of God, in the faith, the faith of this hour. What's the faith of this hour? A perfect faith, a perfect faith where you know that all things are possible. The, the faith, it's going to take more faith than ever was in any age, for this has to be rapturing faith, be taken up. That's why I believe the message of the hour is building up your faith. It's building up, not tearing down. Maybe there was a time long ago when it was time to tear people down, but now the message is building people up. It's building you up so that you begin to realize who you are. Built up like, like who? Built up like how Zerubbabel cleaned off the foundation and began to build up the tabernacle. Build it up so that when it was built up again, the presence of God could come in it. Build up like Elijah when he cleared off the stones and he began to peel up the stones like Brother Way was preaching on last Sunday. And when he built it up, they, he stood with confidence and began to call on the name of the Lord and identified who, who they were, not Jacob, but Israel. He said, you're the God of Israel. He knew who he was. He he identified the church with the God that they served. This is Israel. And, he, and then the fire fell. When he built up what had been torn down and brought everything back again to the way that it should be, then, then you see, then they were positioned for perfect faith. And that's what called the fire to fall. You see, you need, you need the word. You got to have the word. The word's got to be built up in you to have perfect faith. And you need the Holy Ghost to have perfect faith. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. Now, Brother Brown said, now see, at first the disciples didn't have this perfect faith. They didn't have it because they'd had Christ walking with him. But then afterwards, Christ was in them. So you see, it's hard then to have this perfect faith without the Holy Spirit. It has to bring it. The Holy Spirit is what brings perfect faith. Now you say the disciples didn't have perfect faith. No, for they had an epileptic child there that they were trying to cast this devil out of him and they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it by their worked up intellectualism. But when perfect faith entered in on the day of Pentecost, then they were able to do, to do the things that Jesus told them that they could do. Oh my... Let me see where. See, they had the word, and the word was flesh then. And the word told them, I give you power. You see, you see how he's identifying power with the word. Amen. Amen, I give you power. And they had the power, but they didn't have faith right. to operate right. the word that was in them. See what I mean? But Jesus had it. He was the word, and he had faith that what he said would happen. Yeah. He had faith that what he said would happen. So y'all hang on with me now. We're, we're just at the top of the hour. He had faith. Now, see, Jesus, Brother Ram's laying down something. Jesus had faith in who he was. He had faith in the word and who he was. Now, you see how, God, how Brother Ram's building up your perfect faith? That when you begin to recognize the word, you know the word, then, then you begin to recognize that the word has had an effect on you. It's accomplished something in your life. And you begin to recognize something taking place in you. And your eyes begin to open up to what you are. Then you begin to have perfect faith when you begin to see who you are. Brother Brandon said he had faith with his power. How did he? He said, I can do nothing in myself. He relied upon what he was. He relied in knowing that he was the word. In other words, I know that God has made me something. I know that I'm here for a purpose. I'm here to die for your sins. And, and, and that's why he said, I can do nothing in myself. Now, you, you've got that same confession here tonight. 
I can do nothing in myself, in my flesh, in this tabernacle that I'm in. There's no way that I can wrap, I can, I can accomplish anything in myself. But God has hit by the power of the Holy Ghost. He's done something in my life. He's changed me. He's molded me in his image. And now you see you begin to recognize what he has done. That it, that's him working something in you. It begins to build up a faith in you. That's why, you know, Jesus, he began to, he would identify himself in the scripture. That's how we know that he had perfect faith. Jesus said in John chapter eight, he said, then Jesus said unto them, when ye have lifted up the son of man, then shall ye know, then shall ye know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. But as my father hath taught me, I speak these things. In other words, I got the word inside of me and I'm able to speak it because of who I am. Now, come on, let's put that in a present tense reality. Let's put that in a present tense. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Come on now, let's bring it to a present tense reality. Some bride that's coming to a perfect faith that everything you do is pleasing to the Father. All the doubt is being cast out. You're coming to a position where you know who you are, just like Jesus knew who he was. In John chapter 12, it says, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment. He gave you a commandment too. He gave you a commission to speak and go forward. He gave you a word to, to fulfill in this day. Do you believe that? There's a purpose for you to do just like Jesus had a purpose. What I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Amen. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Yes. Even as the Father, even as, his, as a, his, it has been revealed to me, then I, I speak it. I, I, I speak according to my revelation is what he's saying. In Isaiah chapter 61, he's saying, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath... This is the scripture that Jesus, when he went there in the, in the temple, and he, be, he opened up the scroll and began to read, identifying himself with the scripture. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are brown, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He's identifying himself in the scripture. How do you identify yourself with the scripture? When you read the story of Abraham, I go, I'm going through the same journey. When you read the story of Rahab, I'm, I, I also was protected by the blood. I'm protected. I'm under the blood covenant. When you read the story of David, you can pray like David. David went through the same three journeys that Abraham went through. When you read through all these stories in the Old Testament, you're reading about yourself because you see people going through the same thing that you went through. You're identified with them. You're, and it identifies you with the word because when you listen to the message, when you listen to the tapes, it echoes back that I know that I've gone through that same thing that Brother Branham's talking about. I know that I've been there. I know that I was there. Brother Branham said, and he had faith in God who made him the word. He was God the word and they was in him and that gave him faith because he understood his position. He understood his position. He knowed what he was because the scripture had said he was this. He knew what he was. Now do you see the importance of the opening of the seven seals? Because the seven seals actually identifies to you who you are. It gives you confidence and positions you where you're supposed to be. Because when the seals open up, you can look back at your life journey and know where you came from. You can look back at your road map and know what God has done to you. The seals open up and thundering out. Thundering out, not just like uh, something that is impossible to understand, but thundering out lived voice. A life lived by the word is the word expressed. And that will give you, that will position you for perfect faith. Now, you know, the dilemma with preaching like this, recognizing who you are, is because, hold on now. Hold on. You got to be humble. <laughs> hold on now. That, was, that seems like a paradox. That seems like a paradox when you begin to talk about that. Uh, and I know that stumbles a lot of the young people here and everything. How can, how can y'all be preaching that the Son of Man is, is, is here? And how can you be preaching that we're God in flesh and all these kind of things? How, and you trip. Now, don't trip. Don't trip. But go back to the Word and see what the Word says. 
Don't, don't get stumbled all over. I'm telling you something now. If this is true, it's a matter of life and death. Amen. So don't get stumbled over. Uh, don't, don't get stumbled up by deep teaching. But go back and find out whether it's true or not. Somewhere along the way, there's got to be a fulfillment of Malachi 4, 5, 6 and Revelation 10, 7 and all the other scriptures that speak of this age that we're living in uh, about what happens in Laodicea and, the, and all the different scriptures. There's got to be a fulfillment of that. Otherwise, you got to, there's, there's got to be, there's got to be. There's got to be a seventh church age messenger. There's got to be. It, 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 it's true. Now, now, go back and do like the brains and search it out. That's all I say about that. Now, Brother Ram said, in the unconditional covenant, you can never make yourself something that you're not. If you're just impersonating Christianity, no matter if you're preaching the gospel, you need an altar call in your soul. You're just, you're just impersonating. If you're just trying to act like that person that's a Christian, you're miserable yourself. No one in your heart that you're not. You just feared hell and started off trying to be a Christian. God has to call you to be a Christian. God called Abraham. So it's, it's God that, that it, in Luke chapter 14 and verse 11, it says, For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exhausted. In 1 Peter 5, 5 to 6, it says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves younger unto the elder. The whole, the whole Christian experience is about submission and, and, and Brother Ram talked so many times about the way up is down. If you want to go up, get down. See how low you can get, not, not how exalted you can get, not where you can place yourself at the feet, the first place of the feast, but see how, see how low you can get because God is the one that does the promoting. God is the one that promotes. And what's he looking to promote? He's looking to promote character. And you cannot promote yourself. And many times we want to promote our family and ourselves. We want to promote our kids and get our kids up there and, and promote them. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if that was how uh, the fivefold ministry was called. On, the fivefold ministry was called by, I want to do it. Yeah. But you see, God is the one that promotes by character. Right. Right. He's looking for character the same way that he chose David. He chose David because of what he saw in his heart. And he put him up there as king. God is the one that promotes. And so you can't, you can't get high by promoting yourself. Right. You've got to let God do the promoting. You can't elevate yourself. You can't put yourself up there like that parable that said, wait, wait until you're called to the, to the high place at the wedding feast. Right, 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 Don't put yourself up there, but right. wait until somebody else puts you up there. That's a lesson in all aspects of life. You'll get embarrassed if you try to put yourself up there. You'll get embarrassed many times because it won't work right. It won't work the way that you think because you haven't waited for the word to position you and put you where God wants you. Instead, you're trying to put yourself where you think that you should be. But if you wait and let God, let the spirit put you, let God promote you, then everything will work out. God, let God do the positioning. Brother Brown said, therefore, he relied upon what God had made in him. And if he did that, then can't we rely upon what God made us as believers? These signs shall follow them that believe. He had faith in what he was. And if you are a believer, you have faith in what you are. You are a believer. And you're a believer not because that you put yourself in that situation, but the Holy Spirit working in you put you and placed you. The Holy Ghost is what made you what you are today. And I want to say if you're not a believer, this is where believers are made. If you're not a believer right now, then you've come to the right place. If you want to enter into the, into the, into the, 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 the circle of fellowship, then come, as Jesus said to Peter on the boat, come, come and, and eat freely. The spirit and the bride can't say come. Now, <clears throat> let me see where we can go from here. Because Brother Brown, he, he begins to go on about how when you look in your inward to your heart, at the situation of your heart, and you know that something's wrong, you cannot have confidence. See, trying to get position for perfect faith. Now, that's why 1 John 3, chapter 3, verse 18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have we confidence toward God. 
So if you come before God and you're praying and something's, you know something's not right, you're sitting here in the this, in this sanctuary this afternoon and you know that you're not right with God, then it's time to get that out, get that taken care of. Seek forgiveness from those you've offended. Go back and patch things up in your life that, that aren't right. And, and you're not, if you're not living right, get everything straightened out because that's the only way that you can have confidence with, with God. If you're a backslidden Christian tonight and, and something's not right in your life, the only way you're going to have confidence from, with God is to circle back around and get everything straightened up and line back up. Brother Brandon said if there's condemnation in your life, straighten that first. See, if you got condemnation or you might have oil robbers and a dozen more people who has faith to come here and pray over you and jump up and down and pour oil on you by the gallons, it still won't move. It still won't move if there's something down in your heart that prevents you from having confidence from God. As long as you're doing things that's wrong and you can't have confidence from with God, you'll automatically know that you're wrong. You automatically put yourself back there a sinner by knowing that you're wrong. But when your heart don't condemn you and you know you are a believer, and there's nothing between you and God. You can ask what you will and know that it'll be given because it's the word that's given to you just like it was to those disciples. And Brother Abraham said, now the only thing you have to do then, now this is a word that's so strange. Now listen to this, is have faith in what you are. You see how strangely worded that is? You would think he would say have faith in in God and faith in, in the word and all those things, those have come before. The word has been built up in you. It's produced something in you. And now you come into a position where it's time to have faith in what you are. Have faith in what the word says you are. And Jesus had faith in the word of God that said what he was. It is written of me. Didn't David and the Psalms and the prophets and all of them speak of him? I am the bread of life that come from God out of heaven. I am that tree of life from the Garden of Eden. I am all these things. I am that I am. And he knew with that perfect faith that he was the anointed Messiah, that the Spirit of God was upon him. He said, now I and myself do nothing, but it's my faith in God. My faith in God and God was, at, it was in him. The Word made manifest. Now, Brother Ram said, the identification, the identification of a scriptural Christian, these words said Jesus, these signs shall follow them that believe. Right. Now, see what he's doing. He said, first, you have faith in God. You believe his word. Then you recognize what God has accomplished in your life. And you have faith in what you are. Yep. And then you can look back and see that truly you are a Christian right. because these signs shall follow them that believe. Right. And that is the scriptural identification of a, scripture, of a Christian. Right. Brother Adam said, now, how can you call yourself a believer of people and deny those words? How can you call yourself a believer and deny any of this word? See, you can't do it. See, when you believe the word, it will actually produce. And that's what faith is. Faith is the word made alive. Faith actually brings Mark 16 to life where you, you can take up deadly serpents, you drink deadly things, all of the things that were spoken of there. It's on the paper, but when faith grabs a hold of that, it actually produces it. It makes it a living reality. Right. Brother Bram said, you got to take the whole thing and believe it. And when you truly believe, not make believe, right. but really believe, then these signs follow them that believe. Wow. And I am a personal witness that these signs shall follow them that believe. If you live for God, then signs and wonders will follow you. It may, may not be appropriate to say in a sermon, but signs and wonders, wonders will follow you. Right. I, I'm not going to list out all the things that I've seen in my own life, but I can, I can definitely tell you. See, you see people that, people that say, well, I don't see God doing anything. You see what he's saying there? Right, Look at your own life. Right. Exactly. I, I, I believe that for so many years, and, and I, it's like I, I'm seeing this for a new time, uh, seeing this fresh, that Brother Branham said, if you say that you don't see God doing anything in this church and the bride and all these things, it's because that something is wrong with your own life. It's time to begin to inspecting your own life and seeing if you can identify your own life with the scripture. And if you can't, maybe it's because that you're not believing correctly. Because Brother Branham taught us that if you believe the word correctly, it will have an effect. It will produce something. It will will produce signs and wonders. What kinds of signs and wonders? Well, the sick will be healed. The lame will walk. 
the blind will see, you will get a revelation. The word will be opened up to you. And beyond that, the, the word will be made alive to you. It will become a living reality where you'll be, you'll see something because you will have a personal relationship with God, a love, an agapo love relationship, you and God alone. Brother Brown said, oh, could you compare a Christian today with them Christians of long ago? How them disciples walked in the power of the Spirit moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost would say, do it, and they would do it. A prisoner to the word and will of God. He couldn't even move until God moved him. And he said, wouldn't you like to see a church rise like that? It's going to, going back. It's got to come. And he said, it's on its road now, I believe. How is it on its road People were being born again back then. People were catching a hold. He said that I could count on one hand the number that caught the seven seals when he preached it. But to me, that means that at least one caught something about what he was saying. In other words, it was on its road back then. People were already catching a hold of what he was trying to say and being positionally placed, placed into the body for perfect faith. What, I, what gives you perfect faith? The word, Brother Randall said, for the word identified, identified himself, what he was, and the same word identifies us. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 to 5, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. See, there's your identification. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word... In him verily is the love of God perfected, perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. If we know him and we keep his commandments. In other words, we're walking in his word, putting one foot in front of the other, walking and walking up that mountain, up the statue of a perfect man, allowing his word to be made manifest in us, bringing us to a place where we can have perfect faith. John 15, 7, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, Brother Brown said, now see, he knew who he was, therefore he had faith. Yep. Faith could produce when he knowed what he was. Right. Now, if ye abide in me and my word in you, then you know who you are. Right. Ask what you will, it'll be given to you. Now, now, come on now. Let's put this in the context of the sermons that we've been here. Put this in the context of adoption time right. and the capstone and the headstone and the token and all these things. When you know who you are, if you abide in me and my word in you, then you know who you are. Right, right. When the word is built up within you and packed in and the spirit comes and quickens, then you know who you are. Right. 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 Amen. So if this word told you something, then you can have the same confidence then what's going to happen? Brother Brown said, Jesus had perfect faith. He had it and it come because he was the word. And you become the word, you become the word as you receive the word. If you abide in me and my words and you my words, this word abides in you, then ask what you will and it'll be done for you. See, now you're coming into position for perfect faith. And what makes it so hard to preach is when you're born again, you've got perfect faith but you grow into more perfect faith Amen. and more perfect faith. Amen. It's not that you don't have faith. You've got faith, but it continues to be built up and built up to a place to now all that doubt, all that has been cast out and you come to a place where you know where you stand. Now, now brother, Ryan said, he said to us, and I'm closing in just a second. He said to us, if you abide in me and my word in you, St. John here, you can ask what you will. It'll be done. Yeah then recognize your position in the scripture as a believer. Recognize your position. That's why I call it getting into position for perfect faith. Yes. Recognize where you are. Yes. See, you've got to recognize your position as he recognized his position. I see you recognize, You can recognize him like they did on the road, on the road to Emmaus and when their eyes were open, they recognized that G, that was Jesus Christ. They recognized who that was and you could recognize uh, there's a man walking on the water like Peter did, but Peter recognized when Jesus said come, he recognized that I can do the same things that Jesus is doing and he took a step out and began to walk on the water. 
I can do the same thing that he did. He began to recognize his position. Brother Ram said, you're a Christian. You have right to any redemptive blessing that Jesus died for you. Yeah. It's all yours. It's already paid for. You just have to believe it. Now imagine it, but believe it and know that it's yours and you can possess it. Oh, that's the conquering faith. No, yeah, the musicians can come on. If we could just get into position, get into position, like, like Hattie Wright, put us in the position of Hattie Wright there who was in the position of saying after the prophet had shared a testimony, she was in the position of saying that's nothing but the truth. Now you're in that same position. You're in the same position of you've heard the prophet's message and you're in the position now where you can say, I believe that. That's nothing but the truth. And then she was in the position where God gave her the right to speak whatever you say. Whatever you say you can have. You're in that same position. You're now in the position where you've heard the word preached. You've heard the message of the hour. And now the word is in your mouth. Do you know, you know a lot when, when, we, when we talk about the shout, the voice, and the trump, we, like, we got the shout down that the message came. Brother Brennan brought the message, but we don't, we, got, we kind of stumble over you actually taking the book out of the hand of the one. Give me the book. Take, give me that, and, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to become it. I'm going to eat it, and then I will be able to prophesy again, as the Scripture says. It's time to fulfill, to realize what position we have in the Word. Amen. You believe that? Now, now you see, I, I believe. Yeah, go ahead and applaud. <laughs> I believe that because of that, because of the message that we've heard, we've, got, we've come to a place where we can fulfill what God wants us to do. And one of those things to fulfill is that God has made us a people that can worship. So let's arise and worship. <laughs> let's worship the Lord. We should be able to worship him like no other people can. Because we know what we believe and we know what we are. Amen. 705. You have longed for sweet peace. And for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently pray. You believe that? But you can't you can have whatever you have desire to rest or be perfectly blessed. Right there in your seat. As the Spirit's moving over you, you can, you can just claim it and believe it and receive it. Claim those children that are out in the world. Claim it and believe it. Claim those lost loved ones. Whatever you say, you can have it. Whatever you say matches right back up with the word. You don't even have to have somebody lay hands on you or touch you or just enter in with him, enter into that holy place and let God speak to you and perform a miracle in your life. Let's just worship it. You love him this afternoon. something tonight. You don't have to leave without getting it. Just stand there right there in your seat or you can come forward and, and pray for it. Claim whatever you have need of. God is here to give it to you. That thing you've been trying to get rid of, all those, that bitterness and everything, just, just lay it down and let it go. Lay all of it down on the altar of sacrifice and let God sweep it away. If you have never tried it before, try it sometime. Give over all those burdens to him. He said he's willing to take all of your burdens and bear them. Our burden bearer.
it all laid on the altar, every bit of it, because that's what he wants to see you with, everything. He wants you to come like that little woman that broke that bottle of ointment over Jesus' feet, and she broke it so she could never go back. Once it was broken, there was no going back. There was no going back for a refund. There was no going back for the money back. Let's come and, come and lay it all at his feet. Let there be no going back. No going back once you've broken that bottle at his feet. faith together, Lord God, claiming your word, Lord Jesus, that you'll come and touch our sister and her body, Lord Jesus. Grant it, Lord, we believe, Lord, that you'll manifest your word and manifest your healing to her, Lord Jesus. Touch her now, we pray, that she might go rejoicing, Lord, believing in your word, Lord, we pray in your name. Amen. It's done, sister. the only way to have peace and sweet rest is to just give it all over to him. Glory. Amen. You love him tonight? Amen. Anything else? Oh, that's right. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll be gone. I'll be uh, speaking up there in Blue Ridge uh, on Sunday, so. Or McKaysville, yeah. Wherever. <laughs> that's right. All right, let's just go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll be dismissed. Lord God, we thank you for your grace to us and for your spirit this evening, Lord. And pray, Lord, that you'll just go with all your people and protect them on the way home, Lord. Grant it, Lord, that the words that were spoken tonight will sing in their heart, Lord Jesus, and give them confidence and faith, Lord Jesus. Lord, that they might look at their own life, Lord, and know that you've truly worked something in their life and that that might build confidence in them, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you'll build confidence in all of your saints, Lord Jesus, that when we come boldly before your throne, Lord Jesus, we'll be able to just stand boldly believing, Lord God, in what we have heard and who we are, Lord Jesus, and who, we, who you are, Lord God, and come position, Lord Jesus, for perfect faith. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace to us now. Lord, go with your people, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You're dismissed. Amen.